We were on the move once again, and we had the rare treat of perfect wind to fly our spinnaker. Moving our floating home from anchorage to anchorage in the sheltered and typically windless waters of the Sea of Cortez is often a means to an end to keep exploring and finding our next adventure. But with conditions like these, sailing can feel like pure bliss. How good does this feel? Huh? I know, we're sailing! Yay! Today we had our bow pointed towards a pretty special spot. We had our sights set on Los Islotes where we would get the chance to get up close and personal with some of the most fascinating and playful residents here in the Sea of Cortez. Woo! When we're talking about the ballooner, we're actually referring to our asymmetrical spinnaker, or kite as it's sometimes called. This is a sail optimized for downwind sailing, for angles where the wind is more behind us than in front of us, and the genoa loses its efficiency. The shape of the spinnaker is optimized to capture wind coming from the stern of Delos, and is made of a lighter weight material that can stay full and fly high even when the wind is light and our heavier, reinforced foresail would sag and fail to keep its shape. The kite has a large surface area to capture as much wind as possible, and it can be a very powerful sail. For this reason, we only fly it when the apparent wind is under 20 knots. Okay, ballooner sailing, exciting. He's gonna furl in the jib, and then we're ready to put the ballooner out. How good does this feel? Huh? I know, we're sailing! Yay! For the first time, we're like, I don't know how long. Months it feels like. Oh, yeah. Months. never a race when there's three sailboats out, right? Everybody's like... We got a slow start. We have to put Sierra to bed. Yeah. Nux! What are you doing? We're sailing. We're sailing! Mama! Yeah, you know who that is? That's Brooke and Gary on One Life. Cool, huh? We've been sailing for about an hour and we just passed them. Yeah. Oh, somebody's a tired baby. Yeah. Yeah, wake up in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> boats in here. Yeah. Might go over to this corner and check it out. So these guys on this, is that a black boat or navy blue or whatever? They almost hit that other boat. Picking up their hook, they ran over their paddleboard. And that's why we're going to go way over here. Yeah. 
Here we are. How much chain did you put up? Uh, 31 meters. By the time we snub it, will be at 35 meters. So yeah, right, just over five to one scope, all chain. And then you back down at what RPM? Uh, well, I'm gonna back down once it hooks at about 1500. There it goes. Could you guys see that? It's just like hook real good. And then we have this line. Do you want to describe the snubber? Snubber just takes the load, shock load off of the windlass. So if we're at anchor and the wind comes up and swells start to come into the anchorage and the boat starts bouncing, it, it can pull quite a lot. We don't want that load to go on the, the gypsy for the chain. Um, we want the load to go onto one of the deck cleats so we put a hook through one of the links of the chain and then um, the snubber takes the load of that and also provides some stretchiness so it doesn't like shock load and break the chain. That's it. There's all sorts of fancy ones. <laughs> I don't know. We just use this hook. Really it's always worked for us. So I just put this through here like that. They make ones that are really expensive for hundreds of dollars yeah. but are very huge and impressive. <gasps> All right, time for a beer. The next day, we woke up just a short dinghy ride away from a small rocky outcropping known as Los Islotes. Besides the dramatic geological formations that surround this corner of the Espiritu Santo archipelago, it's also famous for its playful and curious residence, the California sea lion. Los Islotes is a rookery, or a terrestrial site used for mating, giving birth, and resting. We had arrived during the peak of the mating and birthing season, so we weren't allowed to swim with them. And honestly, even if we were allowed to, the aggressive and territorial nature of the males during the season would have kept us out of the water anyway. But because of their inquisitive nature, we still got an incredible show from the comfort and safety of Maggie. Whoa! He's so fast! Ooh. He's like right under the boat. Oh, Woo! <laughs> this is so crazy! The California sea lion's habitat ranges from here in the Sea of Cortez all the way up to southeast Alaska. Los Islotes is actually the southernmost rookery for California sea lions in the world, and it's home to upwards of 500 individuals. We are blown away at the size of some of the males who can grow to be over 8 feet in length and tip the scales at over 1,000 pounds. Whoa, this bull, this guy is massive. It was so interesting to see the wide spectrum of activities and sounds coming from the rookery. The never-ending flow of barks came from every angle. There were playful pups zipping around in the water, lots of sunbathing and relaxing, territorial displays from the males, and also the pervasive smell of bird poop and rotten fish lingering in the air. And of course, the main event for the residents here, lots and lots of mating. Definitely mating, huh? Oh, that's hard. Oh, jeez. Oh, he's getting her. Look at his whiskers go. A sea lion's whiskers are actually a super critical part of their ability to hunt. They have amazing eyesight that allows them to see their prey even in low light conditions in deep water. But once they've closed in, they rely on their whiskers to actually catch their meal. They're composed of keratin and full of nerve fibers that run deep into the connective tissue of their face. And these whiskers can sense the trails of moving water that fish leave in their wake from up to 100 meters away. They're able to detect with such precision that blindfolded sea lions can tell the difference between objects with less than two centimeters difference in size. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, that was, was amazing. Yeah. He swam underwater and came right up at the drone and went, bah, bah. but it's pretty far away because I have it. It's like the zoom, so it zoomed in. That was cool. Do you think you will do that on the dinghy too? Like I get know. pissed off? No, maybe we won't get so close. Oh, there, he is. there he is. We'll fly over the island because that's pretty cool. I still got plenty of batteries. So. Or we can drive in the dinghy. Well clear of all the sea lion activity, we decided to jump in the water and check out the stunning topography that extends below the surface as well. The dramatic sea cliffs and arches that towered above us plummeted straight down, creating rocky walls and crevices that make the perfect home for a variety of fish. We'd only been in the Sea of Cortez for about a week, and already we'd had so many unforgettable encounters. This is what we had in store for us over the coming months. Life is going to be pretty good. So after a few glorious days of cruiser bliss and no mishaps or malfunctions on board, we couldn't really complain too much when we discovered a little surprise on board the very next morning. So the batteries are really low this morning and I was trying to troubleshoot why and I noticed that half of our solar panels are not working. What? So they haven't been charging, yeah. Like here's the one on the back. I, I'm tracking them separately. Yeah. So those right now are putting in 230 watts because the sun is sort of average right now. And if you look at the other ones, the flex panels, which are all the ones on top of the Dodger in the deck, it's putting in zero watts. Oh, zero. Zero, like nothing. And so if you look at the history, I guess it probably happened like sometime day before yesterday. Yeah. So. Weird. Um, yeah, and so I was just troubleshooting that because these panels should be putting out like 71 volts to the charge controller. And let me measure it here 36 volts. Okay, so I've got voltage here. And then if I come down and measure it at the charge controller down here. You think it was when the bird shot on the. <laughs> Maybe. In here, I have the charge controllers mounted. And if I measure that, the voltage right here, it still shows like nothing. Oh, that means that there's a break, that I have good voltage there, and then it goes down the mizzen mast through the aft head. It goes, the wire runs up here and then to the charge controller and I'm getting voltage there and not here. So it means that uh, there's a problem yeah. somewhere between this point and there. So here's where the wires come down. Uh, they come down, this is the conduit that comes down the mast. Mm. And then here's the wires from the solar. And so there's no connection here. So it just runs straight through. Okay. So it has to be, it has to almost be either a a physical defect in the wire, which is really weird, or most likely those connectors on top. Okay. So I'll just take those connectors apart and see. Something? I remember there's one more connection, and it's in the mass, like on this access plate. Oh. And so now I'm measuring it here, and I'm getting full voltage, so 72.6 volts right here. Huh. So I'm just sort of like, kind of narrowing it down, right? Yeah. So maybe it's these connectors here. See that? I mean, they look nice though, right? They're not corroded or anything. So the next step would be to plug them in and then, because I can touch the wires on the end with the probe. Oh wow, that's weird. 40 volts. 
Look at it fluctuating, do you see it? It's like bouncing all over the place. Mm. But when I measure it straight here, see how solid it is? 72.4, rock solid, 72.3. So yeah. it's gotta be this connector right here, right? Well, that shouldn't pull off like that. Oh. <laughs> What I might do is just get rid of these connectors and just put a, a butt connector in here. Oh, except now I pulled them off and I don't remember which one is which. <laughs> oh man, I should have done them one at a time. Live and learn. After repairing the connection, we are back in business and cranking away under the blasting Mexican sun. On a nice sunny day, we can generate about 2.7 kilowatt hours of power from the flux panels alone, and over five kilowatt hours in total, which is the equivalent of about three hours of charging by generator saved each and every day. So I'm definitely happy we were able to spot the problem with the help of our monitoring system, and that it was an easy fix using the tools and spares on board without having to wait to order any parts. With everything ship shape on board again, we decided to head into the beach and take advantage of the nice flat conditions with a few laps on the wakeboard. Are you ready for this, Kaz? Yes, I'm ready. Mama's gonna go boarding. Okay, here we go. What a good run! Did you see mom wakeboarding? Wow. <laughs> that was that was impressive, because it was only your second time. Now's my turn. Alright, hit it! Woohoo! Getting there. Look at all this hair. Also, there's big tides here. I know. We better put the dinghy in before we're left high and dry, Kaza. Should we do that first? Yeah, look at this. We have this whole place to ourselves, though. I know. Everybody left. What do you think about this place, Nugs? The only thing we gotta watch out for is the coyotes at night, huh? Up next on Delos, we make a bad call and get absolutely destroyed on our next anchorage. Uh, ah! Did you? Ah! The boys make an even worse call by going into the beach at night for a time lapse. There's more bugs than air. Oh, I just swallowed so many of them. And even the girls are nearly eaten alive on the hook. I am covered from head to toe. I'm so itchy and my sheets are like full of my own blood. So we hightail it away in search of a bug-free anchorage. All right, this is gonna be a little uh, thing called your top three. My in top three? Instead of top five, top three. Oh, in what and, category? Well, that's what I'm gonna decide here. <laughs> okay. Uh, top three sailing movies that we watch on Bordellos. What are your favorites? Sailing movies? Mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> says we only nine. watch if like three sailing videos. Then those so. must be your favorites. <laughs> okay. So my favorite then is Wind. Ooh. Captain Ron. Ooh. And Dead Calm. Oh wow. Yes, those are definitely my three. But although, they're the only sailing videos we I watched. Would do, <laughs> I would put them in different I would do Captain Ron first. 
tied with dead calm for a close first and then what tied with dead calm dead it's calm such is so a weird good. movie so though good. Dead calm. And Captain Ron is just such a classic. And Wind is also very good. Yeah, I mean, you there's know, a sometimes lot. because Brian had this thing where every new crew had to watch Captain Ron and Dead Calm. And we've had like seventy crew on board, so I almost cannot watch them anymore. And you won't watch it anymore. Some That's fine. the last people we showed them to was like, "What is this video? Like, it's such a weird it's movie." It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, you should. <laughs> Go see Dead Calm. It's the best. <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> okay, uh, if you like it, make sure to do a comment, <laughs> and we can have a little banter back and forth. Dead Calm is worth worth to watch or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Look at those hot pants. Oh jeez, it's so hot out here. Huh? I can't wear anything. At least I'm wearing pants. Just be it's hot, that. and you have pants on, and it's hot pants. A little bit more up. Yeah, yeah, not too much, too much. A little bit more down, a little bit more down. Now I have to eat right. Hi! Hi!